to make sure that we only show this input, the save and the cancel button if we click the edit button before, well, before showing it, I guess, I will go to the quote.view file and there I'll add a new property in the data method. I will return an object as we should do it. And then here I will simply say or provide a property named editing, which is false by default. So we're not in editing mode by default. However, once I click on this edit button here, I want to change this and we do execute on edit here. So I will simply add a new property here, the methods to store the on edit method. And in there, I want to set this editing equal to true because that is what we're doing. Now we also have some value we, are, we need to bind to in this input field here. So this is another new property I'll add and I'll simply name it added value, which will initially hold the quote content. So the content of this prop, this QT prop here. Well, and if we go in editing mode, I definitely also want to make sure that the added value here is assigned to this QT content. Because if we did edit it before, but canceled this editing, then we might have another value. So if we restart editing, I want to reset the value back to the content of this quote. Now with this, we can already enhance this by adding the if on this first div, which holds the input to only show this if editing is true. Remember, we do set this to true if we click on on edit. And I'll also add on cancel here. Well, in on cancel, I simply want to set editing to false. This is all I'll do here so that I now also have a way of getting rid of this. And here I'll also add the if on the other div. Therefore, here I'll check if we're not in editing mode to then show this div. With this in place, this looks much better. Let's now click edit. Let's get rid of all those warnings, errors. And we'll reload the page. Well, that is simply because I still have all those links in there. Let's get rid of those links here, this ref attributes. So let's try this again. We still get some errors because there still are some unhandled events. We will work on them soon. Let's now click edit and I'll fix the styling of the cursor here soon. Now this works again, an error because on save doesn't do anything. It's not bound. So this is, this is a warning we actually should get. We can cancel to switch. We, we don't see the content here though. So binding added value doesn't seem to work, does it? And that simply is because I haven't set it up here. So we should add the model to the input of course and bind to added value. So with this in place, let's try this again. Oh, we already see that it now works here. Let's reload the application, get the quotes, edit, cancel, edit, cancel. That seems to work to me. Now the missing piece of course is to hook up all the other buttons and I also quickly want to fix the styling of the cursor when I hover over those links. Now there are a couple of ways to fix this. I'll take the easy way of simply adding the style here, set it to scoped to limit it to this component and override the A link or the A element here to set the cursor to a pointer like this. So now we should get the other styling. If we reload here, yeah, this looks better. So we get this. Let's hook up all the other methods, namely on update and on delete. So I'll start with on delete here. Here I want to reach out to my server and send a delete request. So again, we need Axios for this and we could centralize this in a central file, for example, that would be perfectly fine. Um, I'll do it here in the individual files, but again, you can centralize this. And then on delete, I want to access Axios, its delete method. And then we need the path to the back end route or we need the back end route we should trigger or we should target with the delete request. And that would simply be your backend server slash API slash quote. But then we also need to pass the ID of the quote we want to delete. If this is not clear, have a look at the backend again. There we set it up in a way that the delete route needs the ID of the, well, element we want to delete, which makes sense, I guess. Well, the good thing is we have this ID on the quote object. We not only have the quote content, which we're I was putting outputting in a template. We also have the ID and the ID the quote has in the database on the back end. So we can simply access QT 
ID. And this is again a property available on the quote. If you're not sure where this comes from, check the back and again, we're returning the quote object, which has an ID. So this is the delete route. And this is actually everything we need. We can now also implement then of course, to print any response we will get. And of course also catch to handle error, any error we might get. So let's quickly do this. And now let's save this and see if this will work. If we now reload the page, get our quotes and click delete here. This looks good. It doesn't update our view here because we haven't implemented any logic to do so, but we do get the, re the response, which looks like it was deleted. And actually if we reload here and click get quotes again, we see that it's gone. So this works. Of course, it would be nice to update the view too. And we need to make the save method work. So here, let's work on this first on update is the method we execute there. And here we need to send a put request. Again, you can check this on your Laravel backend. A put request is what Laravel expects here. The URL we should use here also is our backend server slash API slash quote. And then also the ID of the quote we want to change. But then as a second argument, we also of course need to pass the data we want to override the quote with. Well, and here the quote we want to override it is simply a JavaScript object, which has a content property and the content property should of course be the added value, whatever we entered there. So this is what we will send as data to this request. And then again, I'll implement then to log any response we will get. And catch to, well, catch any error we might receive. Console log the error. So with this in place, we should now be able to change that. So let's reload our application, click get quotes, edit this quote, change it to a new quote too, and hit save. We get a response which looks like it was successful. We don't get a visual feedback here in the project because we haven't added such a logic. If I reload the application and click get quotes again, it looks like it was successful. So this is already very good. Now it would of course be good to also see that being updated here in the view if we click, heads, uh, click the save button or see it being deleted if we click the delete button. So let's actually finish our tiny view front end here by adding these two features. Let's start with the editing in on update we of course sent this to the server. We should also set the editing mode to false again to, to close this input element, to remove it from the DOM. And we should also adjust the content here we're outputting, right? The content of our quote. Now what we can do is we can take our QT, the prop we're getting and override its content with the added value. Now we will get a warning when doing so because Vue.js will correctly warn us that this is only a temporary override. It will be overwritten by Vue.js whenever the property in the parent component, which we're getting past here in Qt, right? When that changes, but that's okay for me here. So this is actually the approach I will go with here. And with that on update should be fine. Now in on delete, I need to make sure to get rid of the quote I actually deleted here. So for this, I will actually call the emit method to emit my own event, quote deleted and pass the quote ID as an argument here on the emit method. Well, with this, I can go to the quotes.view file and listen to my own event here, quote deleted like this. This is the name I chose here, quote deleted. This is my own event I'm emitting in the quote component. And we can listen to that like to any other event with the add shortcut here and then quote deleted and execute any code we want. So on quote deleted maybe. This method here, whoops, like this. Uh, let me structure this over multiple lines so that it's easier to read. So on quote deleted in the quotes component should get executed now. So let's simply add this here on quote deleted in the methods property. And I know that this passes some data, which I can fetch with the dollar sign event variable, a reserved word Vue.js gives me to retrieve any data this event may hold and it will hold some data, the ID of the quote, that's the second argument we're passing here. So I can now pass this on here with dollar sign event 
And I know that I will get the ID here and on quote delete it because again, this is the data I'm emitting. So therefore here I can simply go to my quotes array and splice one element. Now the element I wanna splice has to be identified. I get, need to get the position of that element. And I can store this in this constant and get it by accessing my array and then find index will give me the index of a specific element. And to find index, we need to pass a method. I will use a ES6 arrow function. This method will be executed on each element in the array. This is why I named this argument element. It will be passed in automatically. This is a normal JavaScript function. And we need to return something in this method. We re need to return true or false. So again, find index will run this method. We pass as an argument on every element in the array. And then this method needs to return true or false, which indicates is this the element you were looking for or not. And it is the element we were looking for. If the element ID, keep in mind element is just a single quote since we're executing this on the quotes array. So if the ID of this quote equals the ID we're passing here. This gives us the position of the quote we want to delete and then we can use splice to do just that, splice this single element. With this in place, let's reload one more time and click delete again. Now it's gone here and it's gone to you if we delete it here. Let's add another quote like this. Go back and load it. This looks promising. 22. Save this. This looks promising too. If we load this, looks good. Delete it. This is our finished view front and I, I hope that this now shows you how you can connect Vue.js to a Laravel backend, to a Laravel API backend, I should say. I will also show you how to embed Vue.js in your normal Laravel views, the Blade views, we're using the Blade templating engine, later in this series here or in this playlist. So this is something you will learn too. Before diving into this though, let's see how we can take this approach for both Angular 2 and Vue.js and implement authentication on this approach. This is what I will have a look at next. See you in the other videos. Bye.